Hi, welcome back to My Crafty Hen House. My name is Elaine and I brought you back here today in my garden. I want to show you what has grown and what has not grown. Uh, we planted the garden a couple months back. If you remember, I put a video up of some different plants that I thought I would give a try. Uh, so let me show you. So as you can see, I do have a number of things growing back here. Most of the pots I just uh, planted uh, not too long ago, and they are Campari tomatoes. And they are seeds that I purchased from the grocery store and save. They're one of my favorite tomatoes. And they're doing very well in these pots for this time of the year. We're in January and back here, in the raised beds, I have some more uh, Campari tomatoes that I decided to put in the planters and see how they did. Um, they're quite huge. And uh, of the seeds that I had planted, uh, this is buckwheat. Um, that is the only plant that grew. Uh, now, of course, these tomatoes weren't here. Uh, they were all much smaller, so there was plenty of sunlight. But as you can see, my marigolds have just gone crazy. They have done so wonderful. And right now I'm in the process of going ahead and finding any uh, ones that have died out and deadheading them so that I can save them and let them dry out and replant. I do that with all of my plants. Down in here we had uh, calendula, some coreopsis planted, and none of it took off. So I went ahead and I replanted some nata pina seeds. They're little peppers that look like jalapenos, but um, they do not, uh, they're not hot. And then over here I had some zanias, and I only had maybe a handful that took off. I think that was planter error on my behalf. And then this beautiful basil plant really took off wonderfully. And um, so I know I can grow this in here and I'll replant that more. In this area, I had onions and they did not come in. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is a weed or not. Um, it could be, but I did plant some flowers that I'm not familiar with and most did not take off, but we'll see if this one does. Besides doing the tomato plants, I also did some garlic um, that I had bought from the uh, produce stand that's organic. I planted four and this is the only one that took. So again, planter error and I'll work on that, getting uh, the soil more drained. They like a real sandy soil. And this is mint. This mint plant, um, which we use in teas, um, this has been around for about a year and a half so we finally found a really good location that it likes and hopefully it'll get really big and bushy um, i've had it planted in the top here before although it didn't like it and it kind of dwarfed it back so i moved it back into a planter low so i'm going to share with you some of the seeds that i had planted in this area the marigolds, of course, they're from Baker's Creek and they just did an absolute wonderful job out here. The zanias, I think I can grow those again. I would just have to be more mindful about how I plant them. Uh, again, the coreopsis, um, the calendula I planted uh, did not uh, grow. I'm not sure, maybe it was something I was doing wrong. And again, the bee balm and the bachelor's buttons, I, I didn't do well with those either. Now at one point I had started all of my seeds, the calendula, the coreopsis, bee balm, uh, bachelor's button, I all started them all in little cups and I had probably 60 to 75 cups of all of these flowers and I just couldn't keep up with them and they were growing, they were doing so well, but I think I waited a little too long. They got a little spindly and then when I transplanted them, they just did not take at all. 
Now the uh, Campari tomatoes, I did the same thing with those. Uh, and when those got taller, uh, I actually came right out, planted them in my buckets, and I planted them deep, about six inches deep, so they have a good stable base to them. And they seem to be doing really well. They could be a little bit more leafy in my opinion, but they're producing an abundance of tomatoes and uh, it'll just be a matter of time and uh, we'll figure out our growing process. But they're not doing bad for January in South Florida, so I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm gonna take you over here around the corner. We have a project that we're gonna be doing on um, extending our garden. Uh, this is the uh, garden area. I'm standing just outside of it. Let me turn you around. This is just outside the gate area. And this goes back to our pole barn where we have our boat and our trailer and our fire pit. We also have a small shed out behind the garden area. And what I'm gonna do with my husband is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put planters in this area. We'll leave this area open so there's easy access to the fire pit and around back. And then over on this area, we're going to plant uh, more raised planters. And I would like them to be about four feet wide by 16 feet long. This pole barn back here is a 30 foot long pole barn. So I think that's going to offset nicely along the fence line. We're gonna make sure that it stays recessed back uh, so that you have a straight line you can see. And um, this grass is, it's a beautiful grass, but it's grass that um, is very weedy in some areas. The soil back here is very dense. So, um, we don't use this as much as we use the other grass area. So this will be a nice out of the way place adjacent to my current garden that we can then move all of the tomato plants over into this garden. So that should be a really exciting project we get started with at the first of the new year. And I'm not quite sure what materials I have focused in on. It's between using wood and uh, stacking uh, either eight inch uh, 16 footers or 10 inch, um, or I might try the galvanized steel. Um, and we have panels of that we can purchase and build, build a box. I don't have to worry about decomposing of the planner if I go that route. And we can make it very attractive and they come in 20 inch, uh, height and I believe they're they come 12 by 20 so we could get two of them or three of them and stack them and with put in some four by four post and attach them to that and make a nice rail around the top so I'm really looking forward to that if it works out I look forward to possibly making a smaller area on this side of the fire pit uh, just for all of my flowers, my marigolds, I think it would be absolutely beautiful up against the black fencing. So thank you so much for joining me out here. I'm glad I could share this with you, go through this process as I try to learn what I can grow and what I can't grow. It's quite different than most areas in South Florida. However, we do have a growing season all year round. You just have to pick and choose your battles as you're, you're planning your harvest. Uh, so you're not spending so much time uh, struggling with what'll grow in the dry season and, and uh, then the, into the wet season. So thank you again for joining me. Have a blessed day. Oh, before I forget, I wanna share with you my beautiful, beautiful powder puff tree. Isn't she pretty? This is called a pink powder puff. God bless until next time.